All right, here's the magnetic field due to a toroid. So let me first tell you about a toroid. Toroid is like a donut with a bunch of wire wrapped around it. It's almost like a solenoid that you've taken and you bend it in on itself so it wraps around itself. So, um, and then you put current through it. And so you get these magnetic fields inside the toroid. And so let's say that um, the current comes in like this and then it circles around and it does all this. It's going, you know, I won't draw it in every one of these, but I'm thinking it's going like this. And it comes out this way. So there's this current that's flowing in there. It flows around, shoom, 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 like spirals around. Okay, so that's a toroid. Um, spelt again like this. Now, um, if we would like to know that, we'd like to know what the magnetic field is um, when you're a distance r away uh, from the center. And uh, we, so whether we want to know what the field is here, in here, and then finally out here. Okay, so I'm going to draw this. It's, I'm going to take this and I'm going to um, slice it like a bagel. Can you imagine a bagel sitting here? And I take a knife and I slice it and I cut it in two halves to put some, some cream cheese on it or something like that. Well, when you do that, you cut through all those wires. And so now we're looking at the cross section of the wires. So let's say the current comes in here and the first thing it does is um, it comes in and makes a dot, then it circles around and goes and makes an X. And then it makes a dot, and then it makes an X, and then it makes a dot, and then it makes an X, and then it makes a dot, and then it makes an X. It's going shoom, 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 like that. Okay, and that goes all the way around. So there's nothing but dots here where the current is coming out at us. And then on these, there's nothing but Xs. Okay. So um, it turns out then that uh, the magnetic field in here is uh, what you're going to get and you when you uh when these go around like this is it when the current goes around is you're going to have field see how that's a dot coming out at us so you put your thumb out at us and the field is going to go like this it's going to be kind of like field lines are going to go like that I'm going to point that way. Okay, so if I want to know what, just how strong that field is going to be in there, I'm going to draw an Amperian loop. We'll make it green. So the Amperian loop is going to start here, let's say. Just draw a dotted line around here. Now the field is going this way, then it's going this way, then it's going this way. Then it's going this way. And I'm going to um, apply Ampere's law now. So mu naught times I is equal to the closed loop integral of B dot DL. Now that's the I through the Amperian loop. Now the Amperian loop doesn't know that this is all just one wire. It thinks that there's all these different wires that are going through it. So if the current in here is I... It thinks that there is, um, however many loops there are, that's how much current it thinks, that, that times I. It's, so if this is 2 amps and 2 amps and 2 amps, this thinks that the Amperian loop is going to, if you asked it, it would say how much current's going through it, 2 amps plus 4 amps plus, or 2 amps plus 2 amps plus 2 amps, you know, that get, that's, you know, all those added up. So I'm going to say that this is equal to mu naught times N times I where n is the number of coils you have. That's how much current is going through the Amperian loop. Now, um, you see how the dot product disappears because B and DL is the same direction? The dot product disappears, so get rid of this guy. Okay, now, um, why, because of symmetry, why would B be any stronger here than here than here than here? It shouldn't be. So I'm going to pull that B out of the integral. And I'm left with summing up all those DLs. When I sum up all those DLs, if I'm out here at distance R, when I sum up all those DLs, it's going to be 
it's going to give me B times 2 pi R. So the magnetic field in a toroid, if I bring that stuff on the other side, it's going to be mu naught N I all over 2 pi R. This is the magnetic field due to a toroid. Okay, now, um, it turns out, though, that the field gets totally contained in there. None of it comes, it goes in this section, and none goes outside. <coughs> it's completely contained in there. Let me show you why. I'm going to drop an Amperian loop in here. Okay, in that Amperian loop, how much current is going through there? How much current is going through this Amperian loop? And the answer is none. There is no current going through there. Okay. Um, well, then if that's if the I is none, then the B is going to be none. Okay. Uh, this picture is a little messy, but let's just look one more time then. Remember, these are dots here. And these are X's. And um, to get the magnetic field outside of the toroid, like out here, say right here, I'm going to draw an Amperian loop. That's my Amperian loop. It's circular. I know that's a really bad circle, but it's circular. Out here, a distance R. Now, um, if I asked you uh, how much current's going through that loop, I would again say none. Because we might have a lot of this current, but for every dot, we have an X that goes with it. So if this is 2 amps out of the page, this is 2 amps into the page. 2 amps out, 2 amps in. So they always negate one another. So the total current is going to be 0. So that means that your field is going to be 0 out there. Okay, so... Field is zero here, no field there, no field here. But in here, in this region, there is field. What's the field in there? The field in there can be easily derived as mu naught ni over 2 pi r. If you think about that, that's not a tough derivation. If you understand Ampere's law, that's a pretty fast derivation. Okay, thanks. Bye.